Tonight, I'm preaching a word called jailbreak. I'm going to give you six points of how to get out of jail. And, um, and hopefully you won't get in there to get out, but I'm going to give you six points. Um, I'm going to take you to Acts chapter uh, 16 um, for the scripture. Well, not the scripture, but for the narrative. Um, uh, but before we do all of that, let's go to our video for the night, back on the other side with scripture, prayer, and the word of God. If all my chances is up. This time I'm going to spend the rest of my life in prison. I was going through a lot of depression. I was thinking of any way that I could take my life in prison because I didn't want to live in this, this cell for the rest of my life. Roy Yamamoto was facing 80 years in prison without the possibility of parole for a series of drug-related crimes. You know, drugs really controlled my whole life that I became a person, you know, I became a monster and I didn't care about anybody or even myself. His drug problem started when he was a boy in Hawaii, covering the shame he felt from not being able to read. I didn't have the ability uh, to do my schoolwork. Uh, I was put in a special ed, and I was so shamed about that. I was shamed because I couldn't keep up with the rest of the students, so, you know, I hanged around with the, the wrong crowd, and we started to drink and smoke weed. He managed to graduate high school and played a year of college football in California, where he was introduced to cocaine. It took over my life. The addiction was so strong when I got back. Uh, instead of working out and training for the next season, I started to hang around with the party in France again. And uh, we did the cocaine and the drugs. And what happened was when it was my time to go back and play football, all of a sudden uh, this career in drugs is more important. Roy stayed in Hawaii, got a job, and started a family. But his drug use escalated after a co-worker introduced him to crystal meth. This guy passed me a pipe, and I took that pipe, and I took my first hit. And I got so addicted, it, I started to do it every single day after that. His constant drug use drove his wife to leave with his young daughter. I did more and more drugs just to cover up the hurt that I was going through. And eventually my habit became almost a thousand dollars a day some days. To pay for his habit, Roy became a strong arm collector for the drug syndicate. He was arrested in Ohio for extortion, kidnapping and robbery and sent back to Hawaii where he eventually faced more drug related charges. The lawyer uh, came and spoke to me and said that Roy, the state is putting you away as a career criminal. They're giving you 40 years, but they're going to stack another 40 on top there because of your record. You know, I got back to the cell and I was in these four inner walls and I was thinking to myself, man, I'll spend the rest of my life in here. And I remember going to my cell and I said, you know, I don't know God, but I cannot live in here for the rest of my life. I need your help. While in prison awaiting trial, Roy's cellmate gave him a Bible and invited him to a Bible study. And I remember walking to that Bible study and I was a carrying this big Bible, and all my friends that ran around on the streets with me, they were looking at me and laughing, hey, Roy, where are you going with that Bible? I said, you know what, I don't know. You guys kind of helped me out of this one, my family, my lawyer, my friends, nobody can help me out of this one. So I'm gonna just see what God can do for me. At the end of the Bible study, Roy prayed and asked God to forgive his sins. I prayed uh, the sinner's prayer when I said, amen. There are these uncontrollable tears coming down my eyes at that point, and it wasn't tears of shame anymore. It was tears of joy. When I said amen to the Lord, God made me to be a new person, and he shared with me that my life never didn't end. It just started. He wanted to understand the Bible and grow in his new faith, but Roy had never learned to read. Honestly, I couldn't uh, pronounce the words in the Bible. And I said to the leader, oh my gosh, I don't know if this is for me. How will I learn about God if I cannot even read and learn about him? And the leader said, you know, you go and pray. Nothing is impossible with God. And I went back to my cell that day and I placed my hands in a Bible and I said, Lord, uh, please my prayers that, that you teach me to read so I can learn about you now that I accept you into my life. And literally no time God did this first miracle that I know was from God. He taught me, he taught me to read and was true reading the word of God. He says God also freed him from his drug addiction. God brought so much joy. He changed my whole thinking and my whole life and took away this addiction. 
and uh, I could never do it. It was only because Jesus in my life. So instead of a 12-step program, it took a one step to Jesus taking his hand. As his trial date grew closer, Roy began to pray for a miracle, another chance at freedom. I prayed, God, please, you gave me a million chances. I don't deserve it anymore. But give me one more chance to go out and share how you changed my life and to share the Lord with my family so we can be family for all eternity, just not just here on earth. Your word says that nothing is impossible with you in Ephesians. If that's so, that you do this miracle for me. At his trial, the witness for the prosecution didn't show up, and Roy was eventually set free. He found a church and began serving right away. But after two years, his case was brought to trial again. Back in court, his church overwhelmed the new judge with stories of Roy's changed life. The judge was moved. And he said, I just sentenced your, your co-defendant to 20 years in prison, 10 years mandatory, the same place where you're standing today. But he looked up to me and said, you know what, I know that God changed your life. So instead of sentencing you today, I'll cut you free and give you back your freedom. Roy has used his freedom to help others start a new life with Christ. He leads several ministries and camps, reaching out to inmates and their families with the love of God. Being a pastor over uh, a church today and being able to uh, give back and run our camp Agapis for the children of incarcerated and it's like the, the biggest blessing in my whole life. The two judges who cut me free from doing the life actually help us uh, with the camp, camp Agapes, and we've been doing it like for 12 years now. The message of hope that set him free from guilt and shame is the same message Roy shares with inmates and their families today. I'm grateful to the Lord even for the things I went through. I want everybody to know that no matter what we went through, when you receive Jesus into your life, he'll come into your life and he'll forgive you for everything in the past and it'll make you to a new person and, and make you not shame, but have joy. Hallelujah. Amen, praise if, the Lord. If you don't wow. feel it, you don't have it. Amen, <clears throat> man. Oh, man. Amen. 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 I'm telling you, man, you're facing 80 years, arrested. <laughs> he was about to be sentenced, but the judge set him free. Yeah. And God, well, it wasn't the judge, it was God, because no way he was guilty as sin. He deserved Amen. everything he was going to get. Yeah. Brethren, I'm glad he found Jesus. So let me yeah. explain. Amen. I'm glad Jesus found him. Amen. And two years before that, man, God had set it up in such a way that he would join a church, give his heart to Jesus, and then begin to lead others to Christ. And when it came to the final time, when they tried him a second time, Brethren, the, 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 the sentence was, he needs to remain in the church where he is. Come on, say amen. <laughs> amen. The good news is, the good news yeah. is, is that the judge, the judges, the two judges of his cases, they're the ones sponsoring the Christian camps that he runs. Wow. Oh, you know what I said? Wow. That's wow. favor. Yeah. That's yeah. favor. That's favor. We're going to talk about that tonight in Jesus' name. If you got a Bible. <laughs> next to you. I won't keep you long tonight. I've had a long day. I've been on Zoom day and night. Um, um, but we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Um, John chapter 8. I'm going to go there first before I go to Acts 16. John chapter 8. Based upon what we just heard, I got to read this text. John chapter 8. And you shall know, John 8 verse 32, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. I love that. I'll go again, just in case you didn't yes, find it. Yes, you yes. In the Bible, John 8 and verse 32. You need, if it's on your phone, make sure you press it so you get the underlining thing come up because this is a text that you can't forget, brethren. And mm -hmm. ye shall know the truth, and the truth uh -huh, shall yes, set you free. free. This version yes. it says, shall make you free. And tonight, I want to say somebody needs to know that. Someone needs to know that. And we're going to talk about being in prison tonight. But I know God has the keys, hallelujah, to the prison doors, and he can set us free. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, give us a word tonight that will cheer us on the way. For in a little while, we'll be going home. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, if I were to ask you the question, or I just saw in my chat, man, I saw Sister Gloria Joseph. Now, that name, I don't know if it's the same name. 
from the, the Asian church. Um, if it's you, you need to, I'm glad you're here. And I hope the family is there. That's, that, that's my Asian family. Amen. 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 Luann, that's my Asian family. That's my Asian family. It's the Gloria and her folk. They have treated me well. I've eaten much food at their house. Pastor Mohan introduced me to them and, and we haven't stopped eating it. <laughs> Amen. The only thing is that food is very hot. It's like Trinidad. Yes, very well, you know, yeah, it's just that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm from Grenada. We don't do too much hot stuff. Yes, yes. But they gave me some water and some yogurt. Amen. Amen. So, that works. Calm it down. <laughs> But it's just a glory. Good to have you and your family with us tonight. Amen. And we praise God for you. Anyway, uh, this text mm, is so important in our lives because sometimes because of the clutter of life, of life, uh -huh, we become imprisoned to life. Mm. I'll go again. We become imprisoned to life. Are you following me? Yeah. Therefore, therefore, what the enemy seeks to do is that he sets up strongholds in our lives. Boy, I wish you knew what I was going with this. By strongholds, I mean fortresses in our lives. And these fortresses, uh, he, he, he taps in and he taps out and, and, and he sets them up in such a way uh, that we become almost obedient to the enemy and not to God. And yeah. so we spend time, like Dr. Chidi said tonight, we spend time in depression. We spend time uh, with stress. We spend time worrying about tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We spend time uh, thinking about our identity and how we look and how we don't look and how we don't look good and others look good. We spend time doing all kinds of negative thinking about ourselves. But the preacher has come by here to tell you tonight, hallelujah, that God is about to set you free. I'll go again, I'll go again, because you wanted to say amen, but you didn't move your lips. God is about to set you free. Amen. The third time, for repetition deepens the impression. God amen. is about to set you free. Amen. I'm Praise the Lord. Brethren, my man had one life sentence, and then they added another life sentence to it, and mm. boy, he was going to be in there for the rest of his life. Life. But I came by here to tell you if God can move him out of that situation and make him into a preacher at a church, then somebody tonight is about to be set. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. And I don't know Praise why you come. This is the night that we're talking about freedom. Maybe God knows that you've been incarcerated for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Some of us have been incarcerated from the day we were born by the parents we were born to. Come on now. By the situation we were born in, by the lifestyle we were given from our birth. We have been incarcerated, but I came by here to tell you that my God is in the freedom business. Hallelujah. Amen. I told that because I'm black and I ain't got no shackles on. Come on, say Praise amen. the Lord. God Praise the Lord. Get you free. Hmm. Are you all insane? And I'm going to preach to myself. I'm going <laughs> to preach to myself. One thing I want to say to you tonight, your freedom is based upon your belief. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. In the God uh -huh, we call Jehovah, Yahweh, Elohim, or Jesus. Come on, say amen. amen. I'm suggesting amen. to you tonight that what you believe and what you think is what sets you free. Amen. Not, listen, amen. I'm telling you tonight, I don't care what people say about me. Brethren, mm. I've gone through so much hell that I got to get to heaven. Come on, say Praise amen. Praise the Lord. Praise I the Lord. I experience heaven down here. So mm. tonight, I'm accepting God's freedom. Hallelujah. Amen. Because God's truth has set me free. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone needs to know that tonight. I ain't going to hell twice. Leave hell down here. I didn't go to hell. Are you crazy? Brethren, yeah. I'm on the way to glory. Hallelujah. Praise I'm God. Praise the Lord. I mean, I'm kind of crazy sometimes. I got sin whooping me upside the head. But God gave the day, the devil an expiration date, and he told him today is the day he had yesterday. He didn't take care of me yesterday. So it's over, devil. God has me today. Amen. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Let me say this to you, man. If I were to ask you where you would find prisoners, you would automatically tell me you would find them in prison. Prison. You know, they, 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 and you would know that because they dress like prisoners, they, they sentence, they live in, in the prison. But I came by here to tell you that there are more prisoners living outside of prisons. Yeah. I'll go again. I'll go again. <laughs> yeah. 
We, we actually True. think that there are more prisoners behind bars, yeah. but there are more prisoners living outside mm -hmm. of prison. I mean, so, the, so true. I am saying to you tonight, and listen to me very closely, that prisoners, mm -hmm, uh, people are prisoners before they go into prison. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And normally you are a prisoner because something wrong has happened. So I'm suggesting tonight that some of us on this Zoom platform, we're in prison. Some of us on this Zoom platform have believed the lies of the devil and your identity, your body shape, your mindset, your attitude has got you incarcerated. But the good news of the gospel is, hallelujah, if you get to know the truth, the truth, oh, you ain't saying nothing. The Amen. truth is, yes. Yes. Amen. Who is the truth. Jesus is the Jesus truth. Is the the light and the way, hallelujah. And if mm. you come, no one cometh to the Father except through <laughs> him. And I'm suggesting tonight that you you got to know the truth, Jesus, and the truth will set you free. Amen. Now, 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 I know, I know that sounds too simple. But the man was 80 years he was going to serve. He got to know Jesus. And brethren, his only service now, hallelujah, mm -hmm. is to the kingdom of God. Now Amen. let me let me just say this because some of you are Amen. still Amen. you're looking Amen. miserable like a lump on a log. Yes. I don't leave you alone because I'm trying to preach the freedom message of deliverance, and you're looking sad and mummified and zombified and dead. <laughs> if I was preaching about Love Island, you all would get happy. <laughs> if I was if I was preaching about uh, about the voice and all them things, you all would get happy. Mm. If I was preaching about X Factor, you all would get you all would know everything about that. But brethren, mm. I came by here to tell you those things may be part of the incarceration that yeah. we're going to because yeah. the incarceration is about what we see. The Bible mm -hmm. says we have to take, we have, we have to govern our eyes. Oh, yes. we have to let our eyes what we mm -hmm. see. And I came mm -hmm. by here to tell somebody tonight that mm -hmm. you gotta watch what you watch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, what you watch. Brethren, that remote control is a deadly thing. It's the difference between heaven or hell. Wow. And I'm telling you, some of us, we're so locked into televisions. And we're looking at this television because everything on there nowadays seems to be things that take us to hell. There's nothing heavenly about that program or about that situation. Brethren, we have now the, the programs on demand. We don't have to watch the television. We got yeah. Christian TV. Come on now. We got yeah. Lifestyle TV. We got BET. <laughs> we got all kind of ease. But I came by here to tell you, you don't have to watch those programs. We got hope. Hallelujah. For Amen. those that watch 3ABN, you can go to 3ABN. Brethren, you got hope proclaimed. Come on, say it. Yeah. You, got, yeah. you got the Sabbath school programs. Mm -hmm. Brethren, and if you don't want to do that, you can make your own YouTube channel and decide yes. to put up your own. Oh, you ain't saying nothing right yes. here. Yes. Yes. You don't have yes. to watch those programs that's put together by the devil. Mm -hmm. Too many of us have been incarcerated. Because we're watching. Do you know that many of us deal with our relationships based upon what we see on TV? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't deal with it based. The word says you must forgive in your relationship. But we watch TV and we look, waiting to exhale, and the man did wrong. So we're going to burn his car. We're going to throw his clothes outside. We're going to do everything they tell us to do on TV. And you're going to say, like the people in the world, you're going to tell them to get out of your <laughs> life and leave you alone. Brethren, it ain't that easy. When you're yeah. taking that vow under God, is anybody in the building? Brethren, mm -hmm. God expects oh, you to boy. deal with things spiritually and not yes, secularly. Hello. And Amen. your TV watching should not govern your lifestyle. God should govern your lifestyle. Praise you should know the truth, and the truth shall set, set you free. Why was somebody with Amen. 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 Love Island and, Amen. And, and, and Gaga Boo Boo over Love Island. I see all of your posting stuff on Facebook. About mm -hmm. Do you see that one? Oh, Love Island tonight. I can't wait for tomorrow night. And I'm saying to myself, brethren, are you all mad? Are you all insane? Are you all crazy? If ever there's a time we shouldn't be watching half of them programs, it's right now. Right now. The pandemic tells us we have not, we have no certainty, humanly speaking, about the future. If ever yeah. there's a time you should spend your time in godly programs and in godly musics and with yeah. godly association, it is now. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Corrupt people, the Bible say, will corrupt you. Yeah. And if the programs are not put together by God, then brethren, I'm mm -hmm. afraid to tell you 
that you're watching the devil and you will continue to be incarcerated. Do you know that people are depressed I'm because of because of telling them they are depressed? They're watching programs and listening to people on their jobs and around them in their lifestyle. And I'm telling you, man, they are depressed because people are telling them they are depressed. There is something mm -hmm. that we do in the world of addiction called self-talk. Mm -hmm. Self-talk is, 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 is what addicts do in order to keep themselves from relapsing. Boy, I wish someone knew I was going. And the reality is, the reality is, so when I'm in trouble, uh, instead of me listening to what others say about my situation, I start self-talking to Ray. So I say, Ray, hallelujah. I don't care what they say about you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Indeed. All made right. in the image yeah. of Jehovah. I don't care if you think I'm ugly. Brethren, I'm the most beautiful thing that came out of the mouth of God. That All God right. Then put, hello, somebody. Yes. I may not have a six pack, but yes. the pack I got is going well. Come on, say amen. Yes, yes. I amen. Says, I says be good as Christmas, but they're on the way, brethren. They're on the way. But brethren, I have I don't have an identity problem. If you talk about me, it's more advertising for me. Hallelujah. And brethren, I yes. say, Talk. I talk about when, when I'm in trouble, I say, God, come by here. Hallelujah. Somebody needs you. God, come by here. When people try to put me down, I talk myself into going up. Come on, say amen. Mm -hmm. And, and, and brethren, we need to learn that tonight. Yes. Out of your mouth will either lift you up or bring you down. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about prison. I'm talking about incarceration. I'm talking about the fact that the devil has us bound. But tonight we're about to get set free in Jesus' name. The ordinary people in our world are incarcerated. Ordinary people in our world are in prison. And I can tell because, Pastor, when I go to church this sometime and I'm preaching and even the devil himself wants to say amen, the people look miserable. They look sad. They look down. And I'm thinking to myself, brethren, if the love of Jesus won't make you smile, then you're truly incarcerated. Yes, sir. And I'm pausing for effect. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because, you know, some people, they were so happy for the devil that when they came to the Lord, brethren, they look so sad. Mm. And I don't get it. Brethren, the devil didn't put food on my table. Yeah. The devil didn't put petrol in my car. Come on now. The devil didn't heal me when I was sick. And I, brethren, I came by here to tell you, man, God has been good to me. Is anybody in the building? Amen. Amen. Oh, I, I won't stop praising him. And one of the ways we're going to find out in a few minutes is that, hallelujah, praise will set you free. Amen. Today, 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 I was doing 80 miles an hour. Pray for me, y'all. 80 miles an hour on the M25 with someone's birthday. We've been planning this for a long time. Me and my son was traveling. It was 80, we're doing 80 miles an hour, rushing from the radio to get to this place where we could celebrate the birthday. But guess what? Pastor, all of a sudden, I heard this loud noise and the car, the back of the car started moving. Brethren, the back tire had exploded. Wow. And so now, if you know anything about me, you know the first thing I'm doing, I'm talking to Jehovah. Amen. 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 And then I indicate, and nicely the cars behind me stopped for some reason, or they slowed down. I was able to go on the shoulder, and when I got out, I looked at the tire, and the tire, the inside of the tire was ripped to shreds. Is anybody listening to what I'm saying? Brethren, wow. I came out of that, and I'm saying, praise God. That brethren, nothing happened to us on the journey, but I know what the enemy was trying to do. He knew I was going to preach a sermon tonight about deliverance. Come on now. He knew that tonight God was about to set somebody free. And brethren, I tell you, God is so good to Amen. me. Hallelujah. Amen. Brethren, the, the RAC man came. He put his own tire on my car because if you know anything about BMWs now, they don't have a spare tire. And so he put my, his own tire on my on, on, on my car drove it into Watford hallelujah put it took me to the thing and then I was what I was worried because yeah, if you know my lifestyle bedroom I live from pillow to post I don't have no cash everything is a is a just a prayer way come on now and brother let me tell you what happened I get into the place where they go fix the tire and you know what man God is so good my sister Glendine praise God for Glendine Glendine while I was traveling uh back she said, I'm going to put some money in your account. 
just in case you need anything. I wish somebody would smile. Yeah, praise I'm, the talking Lord. Praise I'm talking about praising God. I'm talking about being set free from incarceration. Now, praise I could have worried and I could have stressed and I could have acted like, you know what? Woe is me. I ain't got no money. Tire exploded. Da 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 da. But, brethren, I've learned that if what is in my mind, hallelujah, you got to change your thinking from negative to positive as quick as you can. Because if you think negative, your actions will be negative and your behavior, sorry, your thoughts will be negative and your behavior will be negative. But if you can change your thinking to a positive, hallelujah, your feelings will be positive and your actions will be positive. Now watch this move. She said she's gonna send a certain amount. Well, she didn't tell me. She just said she's gonna put money in the account. I pull up into the place like I own the car tire place. Come on now, I pull up in there. Now you all, I told you all, I didn't have enough in my bank to take care of the business. But here comes God. Hallelujah. When I pull up into the place, Pastor, mm, I'm looking at this place and I'm saying they ain't got no used tires. So I'm in trouble. <laughs> because if you know my situation, you know that I do, I buy used tires. Well, I look around and I'm seeing labels of hundreds of pounds for tires. He came, he looked at my tire, and he said, um, he said, Well, I only have new tires. I said, okay. Um, he said, but I can do you a deal. What? He said, I can do you. Now, I ain't telling nothing about my circumstances. He said, I can do you a deal. I said, great. What's the deal? He said, well, I can lower it to 40 pounds. What? Hmm. Now, you see? Now, the problem with you all is because you all are Adventists, so, so you're all investigating the, the testimony before you shout. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> now, you got to match up to your 27 fundamental beliefs and everything else before you shout. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you know anything about freedom, hallelujah, you shout before oh you say the final word. <laughs> hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So set yourself free tonight and start praising. Now watch what happens. Hallelujah. So pastor, man, I go, I, and so he said, he said he wants cash. So now I go into my bank and I tap in the money. I mean, I tap in the amount. Brethren, 40 pounds comes straight out. When I, it, when I received my next text from my sister, she told me I put 50 pounds into your account. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Amen. 50 amen. pounds. So I paid for the tire and I had enough change to buy a little ice cream. Come on, say amen. amen. Lord, in here, y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't saying, I came by here to tell you, brethren, that there is something about serving God. There's a level of freedom when other people are stressful and worried about the things of life that's going on around them because we know the truth. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We have favor with God and it will set us free. Yeah. So here we go. I'm going to give you a few points and then I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go. And you may, you may want to take them down because you may save your life as you go along the way. Hallelujah. The first point I want to make about incarceration. Mm, incarceration. Here we go. And the first point is you can set yourself free by asking God to show you his purpose for your life. Yeah, man. Ask God to show you his purpose for your life. And then when he shows you, do everything with your purpose in mind. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah. Don't, uh, I, I see, and this is what I don't understand about a lot of us. Brethren, God has already shown most of us the purpose, but the purpose is not matching what we want. Come on now. Yeah. And so we don't want to move. But tonight I'm telling you that the best way forward right now is to ask God to give you the purpose for why you're living. And when God reveals it to you, move in, in the direction of your purpose. And I guarantee you, you will be set free from the incarceration that the devil has placed on you. Be purpose driven. Amen. The second one I want to say is embrace your uniqueness. Oh, with some of them, hey, 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 hey. You yeah. know, some of y'all would men not look as good as the yeah, preacher. Yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. But 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 we all unique in our own way. Hello, <laughs> brethren. Embrace your uniqueness. I don't care what names people call you about your size, about your color, about your history, about your legacy. Tonight, that what makes you unique hallelujah and embrace your uniqueness because god says you're wonderfully and fearfully made he made you in his image embrace your uniqueness and whenever someone tries to put you down remind them that you're made by the creator from the master's hand and because you're made by the creator hallelujah you know him and he knows you and the truth will set you free hallelujah Amen. The third thing I want to say to you tonight, and brethren, get excited about this one. Question everything you see. 
And that by that I mean, don't take for granted what people tell you is true. Yeah. Yeah. Too many of us are gullible. We got a preacher over here and he's preaching and we're running over here because we want to get healed, want to get hands laid on, want to get instant gratification, want to do this, want to, but, and, and that preacher is not even tied to Jehovah. He's just preaching a strange word. We're going to came by here to tell you, question. Amen. And tonight, if you want to question anything I'm saying, put it in the chat, call the preacher, call somebody and we'll answer your questions. Because one thing I do know is that the word of God is saying what I'm saying and we can back up everything from the word of God. Can you say amen? amen. Question everything. Question. Number four, because the truth sets you free, then all you have to do is seek truth. Hey, amen. seek truth. Now, you know what? We used to play this game called hide and seek. You all used to play the game? I know some of you had some real miserable upbringings and everything else, but 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 we used to have, we had good times. Me and my siblings, my brother was was a bully. My big sister was a bully. My younger sister, my younger sister, sister made my dad bully me. Yeah, so I was in the middle of all of them and I, it was just a disaster. But let me tell you, let me tell you, we used to play a game called hide and seek. And brethren, I had the best hiding place. I had the best hiding place. But because, mm -hmm, because... I, 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 you know, you know, sometimes you are so good at something that people don't like you because you're good at it. I know that don't happen in church. I know that. I know that. I know that. But, 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 but the folk used to, I used to be concerned that they're going to beat me up. So when they couldn't find me, I used to reveal myself. However, when you're seeking truth, brethren, go everywhere you can to find truth. Look under every nook and cranny, they say, and find truth. Brethren, open God's word and find truth. Look at the hymns and the words and the songs and find truth. Come on now. Brethren, the truth will set you free. So seek truth. Find the Bible believing church that seek, that, that speaks the truth, that preaches the truth, that sings the truth. And I was talking about questioning before. Brethren, if there's one thing we need to question is some of the songs that we hear. Some of them sound like gospel. They sound like the everlasting truth. And man, when you check out the theology and you check out the words, some of them are new age. Come on now. Some of them are, are written by the enemy. It seems like because they speak about God in a very lowly, demonic, uh, deflating, defeated way. Brethren, my God is so big, so strong and so mighty. Brethren, you better not put him down. Hallelujah. And we got to investigate the songs. But brethren, on top of that, we got to seek the truth in the word of God. You cannot look for truth without opening your Bible. Yes, sir. Don't come to me and tell me that you're looking for inspiration. So you listen to all kinds of gurus and you're trying to get rich and you listen to all kinds of get rich people. But you know, I learned something the other day that brethren, God owns all the money. So guess what I need? I need to get hold of God. Amen. Amen. You want to say nothing, man. Seek truth. Hallelujah. Oh, no. Pastor, you see, my, my whole thing is just gone from my page. You know, and that's because that's because, yeah, here we go, here we go, here we go, we're back again, amen. Let's go to the last two and then we're coming home, amen. We're coming home, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we really gone now. He disappeared totally. Pastor, you ain't praying, Pastor. <laughs> you're not praying, I'm asking. <laughs> you're not praying, you're not praying. I got it, I got it now, I got it now. Let's go, let's go. Amen, amen, amen. So what was my last point? Seek truth. That was it? Good. Yeah. My next point is, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> my next point is, Follow people who are inspired by God. Amen. Praise God. Oh, you didn't hear what I said? Yeah. Find people that's already been set free. Mm. Hey! And stay with them as long as you can. Yeah. Brethren, I was at Oakwood. Now, you all know that I'm not the best student in the world. You all know that I didn't like school. And I still don't, <laughs> even though I teach. Come on now. <laughs> now, you all know that educationally, I'm not in a good place. I left school with one CSE. Don't lie, because some of you ain't got none. All right, so I left with, with one CSE. And those of you under 50 don't know what I just said. If you're over 50, you know what I said. Now watch this move. So now I'm, I, I leave, I go to Oakwood and they say I'm going to university. Now, if you know me, Virgin, I don't deserve to be nowhere near no university. 
But when God calls, you got to equip. Come on, say amen. Uh, I'm one of these people that believe that, and, and, and listen to me carefully, that pastor, some people believe that when God calls, that's enough, and they can go preaching and do whatever. But sometimes I believe that you got to sharpen the tools. Yeah. You got to learn some things. Come on now. Yeah. And I'm so glad I went to university. But when I went there, I'm to my inspired people. When I went there, hallelujah, man, I had people like Henry Wright in the class. Come on, say amen. Wow. And my, 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 my evangelistic teacher was E.E. E. Cleveland. Hello. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. My, my, my professor uh, for homiletics was Dr. Benjamin Reeves. And, and, and then alongside him came Dr. Leslie Pollard. Come on, say amen. Wow. Brethren, then I became the associate wow. pastor, the assistant pastor of the church and, and worked on the, uh, the E.C. Ward, who is the pastor's yeah. pastor. I'm talking about surrounding yourself by inspired people. And then when I got in trouble and I, I, I needed someone to come and pray with me, Dr. T. Marshall Kelly showed up and Dr. Oh, Kelly came nice. and, and man, he started singing in the jail. Come on, say amen. Oh, nice. Singing the song, he say everything to serve the Lord. And I'm like, Lord have mercy. Look at this man singing. Where he came to set me free, are you here? And yeah. these are the people that God allowed me to be around and to and to learn from. And to, and it wasn't so much about getting a degree. No, it was about being around inspired people, people mm -hmm. that had been there, done that. Dr. Cleveland would remind me. He said, man, you're from Grenada. I was in Trinidad and baptized 890 something people. And he would go on and on and on. And nobody's baptized more than me. And he would, he would tell me that. I said, well, doctor, what makes the difference? The difference is Jehovah. <laughs> and he would tell me that and they would, they'd lay hands on us and pray on us hallelujah because they were inspired by God surround yourself with inspired people I remember I was about to go take an exam that a pastor uh, I knew I was going to fail the exam if it relied upon me I was going to fail the exam and then there was some boys studying in the library now they were the brightest boys in Greek and Hebrew in the class come on now so guess what I do mm -hmm. I go to the bottom of the library and I sit down with them. First time I've ever sat down with them. And man, I listen to them talking and I'm writing away and I'm putting stuff. They take, they're talking about the, 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 the language and the definitions and I'm writing away. And brethren, I tell you, I surrounded myself by inspired, learned people. Mm -hmm. Well, I got good news for you. Hallelujah. Went to take the exam with Dr. Rogers, man. And I, man, I, I, I did the exam and I said, well, I did better than I, did. I expected, even though I hadn't got the results because before I couldn't even write anything on the paper. But man, I tell you the good news is when I got the thing, I got a C. Come on, say amen. amen. Brethren, you have never seen anybody celebrate a C like me. <laughs> and I can't tell my students that because they're aiming for A stars. But brethren, that was the best C I ever got because, because I surrounded myself with inspired people. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Don't hang around because the birds of a feather flock together <laughs> and the people you're hanging with may be the people. Yeah. That will take you down. Yeah. Well, let me say the last one and then we'll get out of your way because some of you all are looking kind of strange tonight. Verse five. Oh, no, verse five. Sorry, number six. Healthy lifestyle. Do you know? Do you know that if you're healthy, it affects your mind? Yeah. Do you know that, brethren? And I, I, I should be the last person to talk about this because I struggle with all kind of food and sugar and everything. But I remember I was a vegetarian for 10 years. Yes, I was. And Luan, man, if you all remember, some of you remember me from back in the day. Mm -hmm. I was little and skinny as a rake. Yeah. Um, but brethren, I was a vegetarian and, and pastor. I felt good. I felt like I could run. I felt like I could jump. I felt like I was good. I had no sugar. I wasn't taking anything, uh, stimulants into my body. I was just great. And I came by here to tell you, man, that those were some of the best times of my life. Never went to hospital, didn't have any injuries, didn't have any, and, and you know what? Because, and, and you're gonna go mad on this one, but because you take your body for granted, mm -hmm. it begins to break down slowly. And you don't feel it when you're young, but when you get to my age, I go into the optician and I say to the man, I can't see properly. And he says to me, well, you know, you're approaching 60. I want to knock the man upside the head so bad. <laughs> but he reminded me that if I had started taking care of my eyes, come on now, back down then. And he said, what's your sugar intake like? I said, Lord have mercy. 
And then he started to name all those things that I should have been having that I knew all about. And sometimes we take it for granted, but health in your life gives you a healthier lifestyle. Amen. And that will help your mind become free of what the enemy is trying to do for you. Well, let me wrap it up by, by looking at the final part of Acts chapter 16. And I'm paraphrasing, you know it well. We need to get out of jail. I'd be mad if I told you that these six points was it. There's got to be a seventh point. Hallelujah. So Paul and Silas are in jail. You know the story. They've been beaten because they exposed some people. Uh -huh. and, and, and let me tell you, uh, people in jail are not all, mm, not all criminals. There are some people in there because God trying to save somebody. Uh, I wish somebody knew what I was doing. Amen. But I just told God, don't use me and put me in there to try to save anybody. I can do it from the outside. Come on, say amen. <laughs> now watch this. Brethren, Paul and Silas get beat up. The good news is they start singing and praising God. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why they were singing and praising God was because if you read the text properly, they were on the way to prayer meeting when they got apprehended and beaten. Mm -hmm. So they decided that they wasn't going to allow the trial of incarceration to take away their destiny. I'll go again, I'll go again, I'll go again. They decided that what they were going to do, they were going to do it no matter where they landed. Amen. In other words, God help me grow wherever you plant me. Come on now. Mm -hmm. And so they were on the way to prayer meeting. So now they're having prayer meeting in the jail. I declare, you know you are set free from incarceration when you're in jail, but you can still praise God. Come on now. Yeah. You know that you are in, in, in free from incarceration then <laughs> when you're in jail and you can still pray. Some of the best worships I've had is doing prison ministry. I used to love going to Wandsworth Prison because it was more excited to preach there than it was in my church. Are you hearing what I'm trying to tell somebody? I used to love going to Rochester because we would have time there drums, they had a choir, they had all those stuff. And brethren, what great times I had. Just recently before the lockdown, I went to Little Hay Prison where they house all the pedophiles and all these people. And they asked me to come. And I was reluctant at first because I had to deal with myself on some issues of how I felt about these individuals. But I decided that I'm going to go and I'm going to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And brethren, I went in that place. And when I went in there and I saw people praising God is one of the best services I had in a prison was in that place. And I preached the word. And then I asked them if I could make a, open the door for an invitation for folks to give their hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ. And brethren, the Holy Ghost fell upon the place. Hallelujah. Amen. And people started to stand and come to the front to give their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. I came by here to tell you, brethren, Paul and Silas was on the way to prayer meeting and they decide to pray and to praise God just like they would at prayer meeting, even though they were beaten, even though they, they, they were wrongly arrested, they didn't let that steal their joy. I came by here to let somebody know, don't let nobody or no thing or no situation, people, places, and things steal your joy. Hallelujah. Because the joy that Jesus brings happens in the midst of the storm and it happens at the end of the storm. It happens during the storm. Hallelujah. Because there is a joy, 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 joy down in my heart and it's down in my heart to stay that's the difference between joy and happiness yeah well this is it they started praising you know the story and then the earth started shaking pastor when was the last time new life and king's cross churches had an earthquake because of the praise uh-huh I, I, I don't know. I, 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 I regularly, but every now and then, when deliverance comes to town, come yes. on now. Yes. In a place, brethren, when we the presence of God is so thick in there that all of our sins are being shaken away. You thought the earthquake came for something else, but the earthquake came to shake sin. Come on now. And I know that because the jailer gave his heart to Jesus. I know that because the prisoners heard them and didn't run away and escape. I know that, hallelujah, because Paul and Silas were set free. Hallelujah. I came by here to tell you that every now and then in some services we have in our church and some prayer meetings, and everything the presence of God should be so thick 
that our sins are immediately removed. The trials and the tribulations that govern our minds are broken. Hallelujah. And the truth of God should come through. And brethren, like the jailer, people should ask the question, what must I do? Amen. Amen. I declare tonight that some of us, we are so meager or oh, maga, like they say, with our praise to God, that nothing is being shaken. We remain in sin. We enjoy sin. We go to prayer meetings and we leave with the same burdens and problems. Our church services are so dead sometimes that nothing happens and we don't feel the presence of God. We pray very little. We sing more than we pray and we and our preaching is, is so dead at times that people are wondering, is somebody really feeling anything in these services but i came by here to tell you brethren this pandemic that's going on and all this stuff that's going on we should be on fire with the holy ghost the presence of god our sermon should change our singing should change our attitude should change our mindset should change brethren because i tell you what god has revealed himself through the pandemic and through what is going on we don't have long to go people are dying daily we ought to give god his due praise even now now, for the final seventh point about setting yourself free is praise God. Praise him in the morning and praise him in the evening and praise him when the sun goes down. Brethren, praise God on the bus and praise him in the car and praise him on around your school. Praise him in your house. Praise him at your job. Praise him. Praise him. Jesus, our blessed redeemer. Praise him. Praise him from the rising to the going down, praise him. I'm talking about praise because in the middle of the word praise is the word raise. And so in order to truly praise God, something must be raised. Mm -hmm. So today as we end our services, I'm done. I'm trying to tell you that that night pastor, when the jailer realized that Paul and Silas had not escaped, he realized that God had moved him from suicide to salvation. Wow, he realized that he was supposed to die if they were set free. Mm. And he went to them asking them the question, knowing that his life probably only had a few hours left. And the question is, what must I do to be saved? Tonight, I want to tell you this, that you will always be incarcerated unless you ask that question. Yeah. yeah, You will always be held down by the enemy. And tonight I make no apology. If you have not asked a question, then tonight you need to ask the question, what must I do to be saved? If you know tonight, if Christ were to show up and like the jailer, this was your last night on earth and you haven't been saved or you know the lifestyle you're living will not take you, allow you to move towards the kingdom of God. I'm going to ask you in the chat now to put that question. What must I do to be saved? You're a visitor, you're someone who goes to church regularly, but you haven't given your heart to Christ. Or maybe you're a member, but you haven't given your heart to Christ. Your name is on a book here on earth, but it's not in the book of God. What must I do? I see that. What must I do? What must I do? See that. What must I do? Hallelujah. What must I do? Pastor's place is number there. And so not only put it in the chat, but look at that number and then respond to pastor. Send him a text, send him a message. What must I do? Hallelujah. What must I do to be saved? I see them coming in and on, on YouTube, same thing. What must I do to be saved? And this is the answer. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and ye shall be saved, you and your whole house. And that night, Paul baptized the jailer Amen. and his whole house. Praise the Lord. You must be born again of the water and of the spirit Amen. and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Then you shall be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Paul, sing something for us if you're here and uh, bless our hearts tonight. And then at the end of this, I'll pray for all of those that's asking the question. Mm. But tonight will be your night for accepting Jesus Christ and the freedom that he gives. 
in Jesus' name. I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. Oh, what a blessing. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm free. I'm free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. Oh, what a blessing. Praise God. Hallelujah, I'm free. Praise God. Hallelujah, I'm free. Praise God. Hallelujah, I'm free. Hallelujah. One of my favorite choruses, man. Love it. Thank you, Paul, for singing that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. Oh, what a blessing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm free. Uh, Jonette, I see that in the chat. What must I do to be saved? And Pastor, she's placed a number there. So please make sure someone contacts her and responds to that. Anybody else? Hallelujah. Tonight. Make sure you place that in the chat. I'm going to pray over it right now. Hallelujah. What must I do to be saved? What must I do? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved, you and your whole household. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we end our services tonight believing that God, you are just magnificent. You heard our cry and you answered by and by. And the cry tonight, Lord, is that we're in prison. We deserve a life sentence. We deserve to die in prison. But tonight you reminded us, hallelujah, that you have a purpose for our lives. You reminded us that you've made us unique, uniquely and we should embrace our uniqueness. Hallelujah. You reminded us that we should question things and not just accept things as being true. You reminded us that we should seek truth. Hallelujah. You reminded us tonight, Lord, hallelujah, that we should follow people who are inspired by the Holy Spirit. And then, Lord, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And you reminded us that we should have a healthy lifestyle. And finally, Lord, you created us for praise. And so you want us to give you praise, hallelujah, and glory. And that will set us free. For if we know you, God, that's what sets us free. So we must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, every one of us and we shall be set free. Lord, be with Jonette, be with all of the others that have said, what must I do to be saved? I pray the answer is clear, and that is they must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Lord, go to those that haven't accepted you, and I pray, Lord, that tonight will be the night when they say yes to the call of God and say, I want to go all the way with Jesus. Lord, I also want to pray for those who are in the valley of decision and wondering whether or not they should do it. I pray that they would let go of the hand of the devil in their lives and give their hearts to you. For anything or anybody telling somebody not to give their heart to Jesus, they're working for the devil. So Lord, give them a mindset change tonight and turn their life around and allow them to say yes to the call of God like the jailer. Finally, Lord, allow our destination to be heaven. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. Bring us back on tomorrow night to hear another word from you. And the sermon will be entitled Spit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.